Okay, in this chapter, I'm going to continue with stochastics. You know, the great thing about being able to talk about the indicators in this manner on a CD is um, this is the important stuff. This is the level of detail at which I'm very keen to talk about stochastics to professional traders. And indeed, when I meet professional traders, this is the level of detail at which we talk about some of the indicators and some of the uh, downfalls of them. And you don't find it in textbooks. And part of the reason for that is you don't realize this stuff until you're trading, until you're putting sums of money into these trades. Because it's all very well in textbooks for some of the academics to go through some of this minutiae, but they can't do it from a practical perspective. So, first of all, I'm delighted to be able to do it, but also delighted because you as the listener, as the trainee, need to know this level of detail. And the thing is, when you do even a full day course or a two day course, you just don't get the chance to cover some of this stuff because there is so much other stuff to cover. And, and so that's another advantage. So let me just crack on, now that we've patted ourselves on our backs, uh, let me just crack on with some of the downsides of stochastic, which is why we can't use them in the normal textbook fashion, which is why we need to know these downsides so that we can A, work around them, and B, not fall foul of the traps and make basic mistakes and lose money. So what are they? Well, first of all, the stochastic can often be a lagging indicator. Now, I know I said before the momentum indicators are not lagging. They're supposed to give a premature action. But sometimes what can happen is it could be lagging in giving an indication the price could move first. Now, that's not a major problem for us because we will let the price dictate our entry points. I'll show you some examples in a second. But equally, sometimes the indicator can be too premature. It can be the exact opposite of lagging. What it does is it gives a signal, but it stays overbought or oversold for a long period. In other words, it's not even so much, in that case, lagging as, as being premature because what's happening is it's giving that signal, but then it's saying overbought for a prolonged period. Now, let me give you an example of that happening. Here, you can see that the stochastic oscillator is oversold for a long period of time. So we might think we've got a signal here because the stochastic has risen, it's crossed its signal line, and uh, it's rising from downward point from an oversold territory. So several reasons we think we've got a signal. Oversold, uh, crossed its signal line, and it's rising upwards in that direction. So we might think maybe even at this point that we've got a buy, sorry for my wobbly line drawing, but somewhere around here we've got a buy signal. And indeed, the next day, the price has risen a little bit, which adds to our confidence. Fine. Guess what happens next? Well, and again, as you can see there, you've got the signal. Guess what happens next? The very next day, the price goes down and you think, damn, it's as if the market knew. And the day after that, and the day after that, and the day after that, we're not going anywhere. And we go down. And yet, certainly for the next day, even though the price moved down, we see the stochastic rising and we think to ourselves, yeah, but I should stay in. And the day after that, we still see the stochastic up and we still think, even though the price has gone down, we shouldn't exit. So what happens? It's not until this point that you see it having moved lower and you think, damn, guess what? I got in and it started going down the next day. Has that ever happened to you? Of course it has. It happened to all of us. We get into a trade, the very next day it starts moving lower. Well, let's just analyze what's happened and how we avoid that. First of all, what's happened is some buyers, after this downward move, have come in to give us a bit of a, a, bit of a buy, and the premature entrants have got in too soon. How do we know their premature entrants? Because when we look at it later on, the sellers have returned, and they've taken people into this trap which they laid for them, which was a one-tick upward move. So how do we avoid getting in too early? How do we avoid getting in at that point, even though the price has risen? And also, how do we avoid staying in for so long? We need to found that we should never have got in in the first place. Well, these are common problems that traders have, and we've got to work out a way of avoiding them. Avoiding getting in, and then only to see the very next day the price going lower. And let me take you through some of the ways. First of all, 
And and as you can see, this is, this leads me into the stochastic being oversold for a long period of time. Because what's happened is it given as a signal, or what we thought was a signal, only to have fooled us, and then stayed lower and lower, and the price has moved down. This is what we mean when we say that it can say oversold for a long period of time. So, how do we avoid that trap of getting in prematurely and then only seeing it fall and fall and fall? I mean, you could almost argue, God, it's a reverse signal. What we should do is every time it does that, we should sell and look to do that. Well, actually, let me show you what we do. The first thing is we can't rely on the stochastic alone. That's why we're going to add an extra indicator above it, which is the MACD, which will give us a better signal. So the first thing we've got to realize is if we look at this alone, we're going to fall foul of this trap. What's going to happen is we're going to get a bear trap. The market's bearish, right? it's falling, rises a little bit, we get in off a signal, and then it falls. Classic price movement. Remember this price chart that I mentioned before? We're trying to get in at this point X, and what we're hoping for is that the price will continue upwards, although sometimes we recognize it might do this instead of continuing upwards and we'll get in at this point X only to see the price then turn around and not rise upwards. So what's happened here is classically that move. It's gone up a little bit, we've got in and then it's fallen off. How do we ensure that that point there we reduce the number of entries at that point so that it's more of the ones which are going to lead us to going up so it's more of these type of trades where they go up rather than these type which go down. And one of the ways of doing that, I know it sounds long-winded, is the stochastic, funnily enough, added to the MACD, as I'll show you later on. So what, we're, what I'm saying is we don't rely on the stochastic alone. Several other ways, we add on the MACD, that's how we avoid this type of trade. Now remember, making money in trading is as much about the trades you don't make as the ones you do. If you avoided the trades like this, which otherwise you might have got into, then you're going to make more money because you're going to, from your profitable trades, get to keep more money. Yeah. So, what do we do? Uh, several other things, what do we do? Well, first of all, what we do is we've added the multiple indicators. That's fine. The second thing is we have our stop losses tightly in place. If we think this is going higher, then what we're saying is it should not go below that. Why that level? Well, that's a recent low. And if we're right in our analysis, it shouldn't have gone below that level because it was going to go upwards. Therefore, we'd have a fairly tight stop loss around here and we wouldn't need to have waited until down here-ish. Uh, we could have saved ourselves a bit of money and got in there anyway. But that's not the first thing. The first thing is, according to the when we add more indicators on, we shouldn't have got into this trade at all anyway because we wouldn't have relied just on this. So, I know it's a sort of a, a an odd chapter in that sense that we've gone into a lot of detail, but hopefully what you've seen here is, and what we're going to build on, this is only the first stage, is how we avoid these types of trades. And when I add on the MACD, and we'll see some of these trades, you'll see why we wouldn't have done what many other people would have done, either because they looked at the share prices, or because they looked at the stochastic and got in at that, at that point uh, that we just saw there and why we would have seen that this was still likely to fall and that this was actually a bear trap and that's all revealed when we put a MACD overlay on it. That's all I'm going to say for this chapter. I'm going to move on, do more of these examples and get into a bit more detail with specific trading examples uh, but I wanted to show, uh, as I say, uh, one of the weaknesses of the stochastic indicator there.